Hello and welcome everyone to the next episode on Anubhav Learning Series. In this video, we will talk about SQL scripting in HANA Access Advance. Many of you are working as native HANA developer or ABAP on HANA developer. And it is also very, very important to perform most of your data intensive logic deep into HANA database. This way, you can best leverage the power of SAP HANA computing and take the desired performance out. So as you can see in this diagram, the data intensive operations performed at SQL script level are the best ways to get the desired performance you need in your application. Most of you, those who work as an ABAP developer would have till today done all this processing in application layer by fetching all the data from the database and then doing internal table processing, looping over the data in application layer and then printing your result. But with SQL script, the this processing logic can be pushed down into the database level. As a result of that, you can get the best performance out of HANA. So in my last video, I've already explained the concept of rank function, the window function in HANA, and I'm going to use the same example to build a SQL script procedure today in this session. If you've not seen my last video, I will put the link into the description. Please go back and check the same. So, why SQL script? What is the advantage of using SQL script? So as you all know that we have typically our application engine or application layer. Now this application layer could be in any language. It could be an ABAP system. It could be a Node.js based layer. It could be Java or it could be something else. So that's your application layer, which is which is also providing the web server to gateway server and your O data and stuff like that. Just below that, we have our HANA database. Now, those who are doing native HANA development in your company, probably you not have an ABAP system. You just have a HANA system. So this is where you have your HANA platform. And now what we wanted to do with this is we would like to do more and more processing to be carried out within HANA. So this should be our place where we run most of our logic. So what we used to do in the past is we used to say fetch the data in ABAP or in any application layer and then loop over this data and then do all the processing and then do end loop and then probably show this data to the, to the user interface. But now, if you would like to improve the performance, you have to think in a different direction, in a different way. What, we, what, what the principle of code to data paradigm says that this logic should not be done on the application layer, rather this should be pushed deep into the HANA database. But what programming language would you use in HANA? Because HANA probably doesn't understand ABOP. So in this case, you would like to use HANA's programming language, which is SQL script. Of course, in this session, we will not discuss in detail about syntax and data types and types of containers and different variety of uh, options in SQL script, but this is just an overview of how can you create data intensive logic using SQL script in database. And what we do is we, we just create this code and we store it in the system so that we can reuse it again and again. And that's why we call it as a stored procedure. So stored procedure is one of the container in HANA, which contains the SQL script code. So let's go ahead and see an example of creating the stored procedure into my HANA box. So that's what I'm going to do. So I will switch over to my HANA system. And this is where we have already tested one, one of the window function in the last class. And I will now switch over to my, my project, my access advanced project, which I'm creating. And here I'm going to create a new SQL script folder. And I'm going to grab my SQL script code and I will give a new definition to a procedure. So let me create a new procedure here. And that's my container. Now I can say calculate sales rank. That's my procedure name, the, basically the file name. And I would just bring over all the code which we have tested already in the, in the last session. Now I'm not going to explain this SQL script here in this uh, in this session because it's already explained in one of my previous video. You can go back and check my previous video to find out how to actually achieve the same. Yeah. 
So now what I'm going to do next is let me just return this value out. To return this value out, I should have uh, these uh, these things to be defined as an output parameter. So let me define an output table parameter, et tab table, and then I'm going to put here all my parameters. Let's say partner ID as integer. So I'm basically putting all my export parameter. So basically think about a function model which returns a returns a table, internal table, something of that sort we are doing here. Then we have the sales amount, decimal. Then I have a number of orders. Then I have rank order amount. or this is just a rank, so it's enough to be an integer. And finally, I have my property for D rank order amount. All right, so that's my output parameter, just one output parameter, I have it as a, as a table parameter as part of my, my procedure. It's returning a table type. So let's, let's do this. Okay, we're good. So now what next I'm going to do is I will go back and return this, fill this ET tab with the with the data in my code. So this select result is directly passed to my ET tab. And maybe of course this should be selected as a partner ID. Okay, so we are done with this. Now we can just save this up and let's try to build the procedure. So in HANA Access Advanced, you have to do this build process, which is not going to deploy your design time object to the container, as compared to in classical world where you used to activate these things in the past. So as we are newly learning these stuff, we have to do everything in Access Advanced, not in Access Classic. So I'm now kind of building my procedure, and I can also see the build log right here at the bottom. So let's see that. And if it fails, we will also get to know the reason of failure. So it's still building. On the right top corner, we'll see the state, whether the procedure is built successfully or not. We will be able to see that. And you can see it failed. So let's go ahead and investigate what's the reason of failure. And you can see this little red icon indicating what's going wrong in your code, SQL script code. So let me hover my mouse onto this and we will get to know exactly what's the what's the reason of failure and you can see it says data type expected so this particular property intentionally i did not put the data type and that's the reason of failure so let me go ahead and do that I'll save it you can see the error is gone and of course this time we can perform the build you can always go to this uh this uh, error logs also and you can also see it here the exact error Anyway, we we fixed it just now, and it should now build my my procedure. Okay, so my build is complete. You can see here, and I, it's time for me to switch over back to my data explorer. And this time the object is a procedure and we should be able to see our procedure right here in this design, runtime object section. So this is our procedure. Let's right click and say generate a call statement to my procedure. And now this is gonna print the result on our screen. So let's execute this and there you go. You can see the same SQL script code which I've tested in the console in the last session is now visible right here at front of us but I would like to add a little bit of flavor to it. Basically, I don't want to show partner ID, rather I would like to show the company name. So we will go back and enhance our, our SQL script code. So I will come back, maybe just maximize this one little, and let's add another code to be able to maximize this. So for, of course, instead of partner name, I would like to return company name. And this is gonna be what char, let's say 255 and instead of this partner id we would like to 
expose the company. So I can just take this intermediate result inside in another internal table. So I can say uh, orders and we can join this to, to another table, which is my partner's table. And that's the result we're going to return back. I can say select company name from my business partner table. And then of course, rest of the fields as it is. Sales amount, number of orders, rank amount, and D rank amount from my master data partner table as BPA in a join my order table. S over D and my joint condition. So business partner partner ID to be compared with my order partner ID. And that's a result we would like to expose it out. Now over here we can just also give this alias name before our fields, which is quite quite important. Just give them up. and yeah all looks good so we can just go ahead and now test this so of course again there is an error it's a unresolved resolvable table view master i got it so it's master data actually my context name is master data in my cds so that's the problem i save it now let's build again and we should be able to see company name in spite of uh, the business partner id this time so i'm going to go back right click Build. So you can see the build is success. Next time, I will go back to my SQL console. And last time we were seeing here the result as the partner ID. And let's re-execute our our procedure. And there you go. You can see now the company names are coming up right into my list of results in spite of the. The technical ID, which is not not meaningful for the end user. Now I can also create a table function on the same way, and that table function we can we can channelize as an output to my calculation calculation views in HANA, because with HANA Access Advanced now system also supports is uh, instead of is scripted calculation views we have a capability to plug in a table function as part of calculation view. Of course, that's something which is more in detail. If you are interested to learn. You can subscribe my native HANA come access advanced training where we cover all such scenarios and possibilities with XSA. With that, thank you so much for joining. I will see you in the next video and goodbye.